Hey everyone, it's Catherine with Free Tours by Foot. Today we're going to go on a little walk through Battery Park in Battery Park City. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm actually starting off right across the street from Battery Park. I am at the Staten Island Ferry Terminal, which you can pretty clearly see by the giant letters. So the Staten Island Ferry is a free public commuter ferry and it runs between the southern tip of Manhattan, which is where we are right now, straight across the harbor, and it goes across to the terminal right at the tip of Staten Island. Um, you've actually probably heard it mentioned before, or you've seen things about it, uh, if you've planned any trips to New York City. Um, even though it is really just a commuter ferry, a lot of people who are visiting New York take it as a tourist attraction, um, almost like an alternative Statue of Liberty ferry. It does not actually stop at Liberty Island or at Ellis Island, but it does go right by the Statue of Liberty. You can get one of the best closest views of the Statue of Liberty without actually docking and getting off at Liberty Island. And the Staten Island ferry is free. So if you are planning a very budget conscious trip, it can be a great option to uh, jump on the Staten Island ferry, take a ride across, it takes like 20, 25 minutes to get across and then, you know, most people just turn around and come back. So about an hour all in once you've gotten off at Staten Island, gone through the terminal, gotten back on. Um, if you decide to do it, and I highly recommend checking it out, we have a self-guided audio tour that you can listen to while you're riding on the Staten Island Ferry. And that'll tell you a little bit about what you're actually looking at. And we have one for going there from Manhattan and then one for the way back as well. So that's definitely something to check out. So we're crossing over, heading into Battery Park. Just wanna give you a quick look across the street. That building is today called the Shrine of St. Elizabeth Ann Seton. St. Elizabeth Ann Seton was the first American born Catholic saint. Um, if that looks like an unusual structure for a church, that's because it wasn't really built as a church. The part on the right with the columns was actually built as a home. <laughs> it was a private home. Um, the part on the left was added quite a bit later when this became the saint's shrine. You can actually see if you look really, really closely that the brook is uh, quite a bit newer, visibly newer. So we're going to head here into Battery Park. So this park that we're going to be walking through for just a little while has a long history in New York City and is also one, I think a lot of people come to Battery Park because it is a launching point for some pretty popular tourist attractions like the Statue of Liberty Ferry. But a lot of people just walk through Battery Park. They don't really take the time to check out what's here, which is a shame because it's a pretty densely packed park. There's really quite a bit to see considering it's not that big. Um, so this structure over here on the right that looks like a weird spaceship, not a spaceship, this is called the Sea Glass Carousel. Let's see if I can walk over and get a little closer look for you. Um, go around the other side. So you'll see when we get closer, this is a very um, sea creature themed carousel. Um, there's some giant fish that you can ride on. So the reason for the theme here is actually a nod to something very, very popular that used to be here in Battery Park, and that was the New York Aquarium. The New York Aquarium had its home here starting in the 1890s, and it was here for over 50 years, actually, before it moved. Now it's at Coney Island. But in the time that it was here, down in Battery Park, they got... I think a little over 2 million visitors a year. It was a really, really popular thing to come and do when you visited New York City. So when they were planning this carousel, they decided to kind of do a nod to the former New York Aquarium. New York Aquarium here in Battery Park uh, in the 1890s was one of the first public aquariums in the United States. So that was part of the reason it was so popular. It was something a lot of people hadn't done before. So. It's a beautiful time of year to come here. We have a lot of flowers coming up. Everything's very purple. I'm guessing they planned that. Um, so Battery Park has actually had some pretty recent renovations. A lot of what you see here 
it is recently redone. And that was pretty necessary because this was one of the areas of Manhattan that was really, really hard hit by Hurricane Sandy in 2012. Um, part of the reason this was so hard hit is Battery Park, like a lot of lower Manhattan, is not originally a part of the island. This is all built on landfill. It's, this is not where the original shoreline was. Oh, these are really pretty. Don't know what they are, but they're beautiful. Um, so a lot of those areas of Manhattan that were built on landfill flood very, very easily. Uh, and this was very flooded during Hurricane Sandy and, and the park needed almost a complete overhaul in the aftermath of that hurricane. So Battery Park, again, pretty small little park, but uh, has a pretty dense clustering of monuments in it. And this is one of them. We're gonna walk through, but I'm gonna try to get out to the edge so you can really take in the full scale of this. So this is called the East Coast Memorial. Um, that giant horn you just heard was from the Statue of Liberty Ferry. Uh, so you can see this massive monument. You have these eight giant stone tablets. And so this is a monument to over 4,000 US service members who were lost and killed in action in the Atlantic Ocean during World War II. So all of these tablets are covered with names, has military rank, it has the branch of the military that they served in. And it's, it's a pretty beautiful memorial and it's very imposing looking. You can actually see the eagle right in the middle. And I'll turn around so you can see the eagle faces directly out into the harbor. You can see the Statue City Cruises right there. That's the Statue of Liberty Ferry that's getting ready to depart. Um, this memorial looks out. That's Governor's Island over there. Governor's Island is actually one of the very first places that Europeans settled in this area. Uh, New Amsterdam, the, the Dutch West India Company, initially landed over there on Governor's Island. Um, and then for many, many years, it was used as a military base by the US military. But it's park space now, it's public park space. If you are visiting New York City in the summertime, you can take a free again take a free ferry over to governor's island there's the statue of liberty right out there so now you can see now that the boat has moved that the eagle from this monument is directly facing the statue of liberty and then you can see ellis island out there to the right in the harbor so i'll give you a nice panorama of the harbor here it's a gorgeous day today i'm getting excited for summer and like I said, if you visit in the summer, definitely, of course, take, take one of the, the boats out there. You can see the Staten Island Ferry is the orange one that's just coming in from the left, and that'll be going straight across to Staten Island. Um, you can take the Staten Island Ferry, you can take the smaller ferry over to Governor's Island, or you can take the Statue of Liberty Ferry, which will also take you to Ellis Island. Or you can do all three. If you have time, do all three. <laughs> so, this is obviously where you catch the Statue of Liberty ferry. Um, you can see the lineup right here, but this is not actually where you go to buy your tickets. I will be showing you that a little bit later on, but I want to give you a closer look at one of the tablets here before we go. So you can see exactly what it looks like. head along the path here. So this spot in Battery Park, by the way, if you are not planning on going out in the water, <laughs> um, then this is about as close as you'll be able to get to the Statue of Liberty from land. So if a boat ride is just absolutely a not a part of your plans, <laughs> that's okay. You still want to come down here to Battery Park though so that you can see the Statue of Liberty, even if it is from a distance. You can see Ellis Island over there. Ellis Island, if you're not familiar with it, was our immigration processing depot uh, starting in 1892. Uh, and in the time that Ellis Island was opened, over 12 million immigrant arrivals were processed there. I think the statistic is 
about one third of the people that live in the U.S. are related to somebody that came through Ellis Island. For so guy, for a lot of us that live in the U.S., this is this is a part of our heritage. It's part of our ancestry. And Battery Park, really and truly, I will say it again: don't uh, don't miss Battery Park, and don't just rush through it either if you have the time because it's a really lovely place to hang out it's pretty quiet and it's not typically other than the lineup for the statue of liberty it's not typically super super crowded either so it can be a nice place you can see it's a gorgeous day today it's warm out it's sunny out and there are definitely people here but it is not jam-packed so once I'm done showing you around, I'll probably come back here and hang out myself. Okay, so we are walking over towards this big round structure over here. And this is Castle Clinton. So this structure has a really long, interesting history. Um, so I said earlier that all of this park that we're walking through is landfill. That is all true. This structure actually predates Battery Park being here. This used to be out in the water. So this was built as a part of the fortifications for New York Harbor for the War of 1812. New York had been really hard hit during the American Revolution. We were actually British occupied from the very, almost the very beginning of the American Revolution and almost until the very end. And so it was assumed when the War of 1812 was beginning that New York was going to need to be very heavily fortified. And so this structure was put out in New York Harbor. So a little construction going on right now. They're doing some renovation. Sorry about the construction fence. Uh, ultimately, it was not really necessary because the War of 1812 didn't really touch New York, <laughs> but we had this structure left over. Over the years, because it wasn't needed as a military fortification anymore, it was used for all kinds of things. This was used um, as a theater. It was a beer garden at one point. Right down here is where the aquarium would have been. So we ended up having a lot of different lives. And this structure here was also added to, changed, altered over and over and over again. But by the 1850s, it was decided that while there was open immigration into the United States, meaning you didn't need visas, you didn't need to apply, anything like that, that the government did want to start recording who was coming. And so this became the immigration processing depot for New York. The building looked quite a bit different at that time, uh, but they ended up processing people here. Most people know of Ellis Island as the Immigration Processing Depot, and that is definitely true. But from 1855 until 1892, when Ellis Island opened, this is where everybody came in. So if you've ever gone looking for, you know, ancestors at Ellis Island and come up short, your ancestors may have come a little bit earlier. They may not have come through Ellis Island. They may have come through Castle Clinton. So that's what this sculpture is here. This is called the Immigrants, a pretty fantastic sculpture grouping. Um, this is done in bronze. And I'm gonna get much, much closer. So you can see there's, there's some really great detail on these sculptures. And it's really just trying to show kind of the full spectrum of, of emotions that somebody might have felt immigrating here, leaving their homes behind. So this sculpture here is specifically here to commemorate the immigrants who entered the United States through Castle Clinton. So I'll show you the plaque here. Ooh. The immigrants dedicated to the people of all nations who entered America through Castle Garden uh, which was another name for Castle Clinton at the time. Um, Castle Clinton referred to a former governor of New York, DeWitt Clinton, um, but both names were used. So like I said, this is where you would come in if you are, um, if you are going to the Statue of Liberty or Ellis Island. This is actually 
the entry point. Um, this is where you can go and get tickets. Of course, you can get those tickets online as well. And I certainly recommend getting them online because the lines to get tickets here can be really, really long. Um, but before you leave, this is where you would want to come and check in. If you have will call tickets, like if you've ordered them online but haven't printed them out and you need to go get them, this is where you would get them. Like I said, some construction happening right now, but still open for business. You can see the signs here telling you this is where you get your tickets. And actually, here's a look at some of the different options that you have. Um, check out, we have a self-guided audio tour for the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island. We have blog posts about the different ticketing options. We have podcasts on the different ticketing options. Um, it can be a lot of information. There are a lot of different choices when you come and do this. So if you wanna make sure you are choosing the very, very best thing for your family, make sure you check out some of those. So one of the things that was done when this became the entry point for the Statue of Liberty is they actually restored the building to look pretty similar to what it looked like when this was originally built as a fort. And like I said, the building had had so many alterations by that point, but this kind of took it back to its original structure. This is also a great place. If you're in Battery Park, this is where the restrooms are. <laughs> And you probably also want to hit those up if you are going to get on the Statue of Liberty ferry. I highly recommend going to the restroom here at Castle Clinton rather than using the ones on the boat or waiting in lines uh, possibly for them on Liberty Island or Ellis Island. There's the tickets over there. So this is closed right now, I think as a part of the renovation, but make sure you get here a little bit early when you come because this little side here this little tiny part of the building is actually a museum it is so small you only need 15 minutes to go look at it but i really really recommend that you check it out it will actually show you i referenced that castle clinton has looked very very different <laughs> throughout its history it actually has scale models of all of the different iterations of this building throughout its history and, and all of the different functions that it has had while it's been here at the southern tip of Manhattan. So I do recommend making sure you save a little bit of time to do that. So we are going to walk up right up to the edge of Battery Park because there's another monument that I want to show you. And then we'll be looping back down this way. We still have more to see. We're not leaving the park. I just want to show you something that's right at the entrance to the park. The little building you can see straight up ahead is the entrance for the four and five subway trains at Bowling Green. I believe that is actually one of the oldest subway station structures in New York City. And this much larger building you can see behind it is formerly the Customs House, the Alexander Hamilton Customs House, named after the first secretary of the US Treasury. A really beautiful building. And now it is home to the Museum of the American Indian. The Museum of the American Indian is a part of the Smithsonian family of museums. So it is free to go in. We don't have that much in New York that is really and truly free. So take advantage when you get a chance. It is really a fantastic museum and can be a nice addition if you're down here, um, there's a lot to see down here as a tourist. Wall Street, Trinity Church, the World Trade Center, Battery Park. That's definitely something I would recommend. There's a small exhibit inside just kind of detailing the building's history as a customs house and how important that was to the economy of New York City at the time. And then the museums uh, that are a part of the Museum of the American Indian are really wonderful as well and the building itself is just spectacular uh, even if the museum wasn't great which it is it would be worth going in just to see the building because it's beautiful so what i walked all the way up here to show you was this flagpole 
So right up there at the top, you can see the US flag and then the, actually the city flag for the city of New York. But at the base of the flagpole is a memorial. And so you can see it's depicted here um, on the right, that's supposed to be a member of the Dutch West India Company. And on the left, a member of the Lenape tribe. And so on the side here, this is all written in Dutch. This is showing you a depiction of Fort Amsterdam, what that would have looked like. And this is, this side's in English here. Um, so what this is depicting is probably a story that you've heard in some form at some point. And that is the supposed sale of Manhattan, of the island of Manhattan to the Dutch. So again, you have probably heard this. This has become a really famous story throughout the years. And um, I will try to give you all of the facts as I know them and then tell you uh, what some of the misconceptions are as well. So you, what you have probably heard, and certainly the, the story in the popular imagination, is that the island of Manhattan was sold by the Lenape, the Native American tribe here, to the Dutch for $24. Uh, so the governor of Dutch New Amsterdam at the time was Peter Minuit. And that was, I think, who was supposed to be depicted in the memorial there was Peter Minuit. And he is who supposedly bought the island of Manhattan. So in reality, no money was actually exchanged at all. Uh, what was exchanged were beads, pottery, furs, um, common things that would have been in the area at the time. And the way the number $24 was reached, and I think that's so startling to people, especially because people know how expensive New York real estate is. Um, the way $24 was reached is in the 19th century, somebody actually calculated the approximate value of the goods that were exchanged at the time and they came up with the figure 24 Dutch guilders. And at the time, in the 19th century, the conversion would have been about 24 US dollars. Um, so the problem was that number was never adjusted for modern inflation. The modern number would be uh, like $1,200, maybe a little bit more. The much, much bigger issue is that the Lenape, the Native American tribe who had lived here for thousands of years, had no concept of property ownership in their culture. They didn't believe that they could sell the land because to them, the land wasn't theirs to sell. What they would have interpreted the gesture as was probably more along the lines of a goodwill gesture, um, that the Dutch were going to be here for a while and they were going to share the land, certainly not that they were selling it to them. Uh, that is not how the Dutch interpreted it to them. They had bought Manhattan right out and New Amsterdam was founded. So right here is the Verrazano Memorial. Giovanni Verrazano is the man there in the sculpture. Ah, uh, you've maybe heard the name before by way of the Verrazano Bridge. Uh, most people think of, as far as Europeans sailing into New York Harbor, the first person being Henry Hudson. That's actually not true. The first person was Mr. Giovanni Verrazano, first European to sail into this area. He did that in the 1520s, I believe. So quite a bit earlier than Henry Hudson in the early 1600s. Um, most things ended up named after Henry Hudson. <laughs> uh, as anybody who has visited New York or looked at a map of New York can tell you. Uh, Mr. Verrazano though, besides that uh, monument over there, does have a pretty large suspension bridge in our harbor named after him. The Verrazano Narrows Bridge connects Brooklyn and Staten Island. When it was built, it was the longest suspension bridge in the entire world. So we're heading to see a couple more monuments. Like I said, a surprising amount of monuments considering this is really not that large of a park. Uh, and I love coming down here and showing people the monuments because not only are there so many, uh, they're all really different styles as well. So we have a nice variety of things. So we're gonna head down this path. We are heading to the Merchant Mariners Memorial. 
So this is another one uh, that is a memorial, essentially a World War II memorial, but this one is specifically about merchant mariners. Um, there were many merchant mariners from the United States who lost their lives and were sunk uh, primarily by German U-boats. And so this is a monument to those mariners that lost their lives. So this one here, it's had a lot of different styles of, uh, of monuments here. This one here is incredibly lifelike. Um, this is not abstract, it's not modernist, very, very lifelike and pretty jarring. Actually, let me make sure so you can see there's even a part of it in the water there. This is depicting mariners as their boat is sinking. And if you're wondering how the artist possibly imagined this design, he didn't. Uh, there was actually a group of mariners who were photographed as their boat was sinking. And so the artist worked directly off of that photograph. And so I think that's why it's so uh, charring to people is it is so lifelike because it was taken from real life events. This one up here is the Korean War Memorial. I'm gonna see if I can get right next to it. It looks like they maybe have it roped off today and I'm not gonna be able to get right up close, but I will certainly get as close as I can. So this is a memorial to all those who were killed in the Korean conflict. So in the middle, the cutout is meant to be called the universal soldier it's meant to represent any soldier and you can see all around the base I'm gonna actually walk around you have these mosaics those flags are mosaics and that is all of the countries that were involved in this country let me hop up here and see if I can get closer there we go um, so all the way around and there is also a pretty unique feature in that not something we'll be able to see today because it's not the right day but this is designed so that on the exact day and time that the korean conflict was over that uh, the sun will directly pass overhead and it will go through an opening at the top and illuminate a plaque at the bottom so a pretty unique design feature, something that you can only catch on a certain day at a certain time. So we are technically at this point going to be heading out of Battery Park. We're going to be heading into Battery Park City. Even though they share a name, they are really very, very separate. Battery Park is a park. It's part of the city park system. Battery Park City is really primarily a residential area but it's beautiful has some spectacular views out over the water and some interesting features as well so it's certainly something that's worth seeing especially because we are so close by <laughs> so battery park city uh didn't even exist really until the 1980s and most of this wasn't even really land initially so much like battery park which years earlier had been created via landfill battery park city was as well just much later and this was largely done through the creation of the world trade center so i'm going to be able to show you in a minute how close we are to the trade center there's one world trade right there so when the original world trade center was being created in the 1960s they had to dig out and over a million cubic feet of earth in order to create the trade center and so when they did that they ended up putting it right over here uh, adjacent to Hudson and they created new land space in Manhattan and eventually this area was built up as Battery Park City so that is where we are walking now Battery Park City just so you know even though it is so close to all of these really popular tourist attractions not a place you will find a lot of tourists. Most of the people we're going to go by today are going to be locals. <laughs> this is really largely a residential area, but I love coming through here because there are some very cool, some nice park spaces, some really cool art installations as well. So especially if you are an art lover, 
especially sculpture, I really recommend coming over to Battery Park City because you'll see some cool stuff. So this part here is called Robert F. Wagner Jr. Park. Beautiful little park space. Nice and quiet. Like I said, not a lot of tourists in this area. So if you are down here in the hustle and bustle, going to the World Trade Center, going to Wall Street, Stock Exchange, all that stuff, and you just need a little peace and quiet, it's so quick to walk over here to Battery Park City. And as you can see, it's shady and leafy and lovely. And you'll have most of it to yourself. This is also home to the Museum of Jewish Heritage. As you can see it says here, a living memorial to the Holocaust. Um, I think this is a museum a lot of people tend to miss or skip when you're here in New York City. Maybe not one of the better known ones, but it is very worth doing. And you can see how close it is to a lot of other things in lower Manhattan. Really easy thing to add on to a day down here. So we're gonna continue walking a little bit here in Wagner Park. See what we see. Enjoy the day, enjoy the sun and the quiet. <laughs> we'll probably make our way over to the water though. A little bit more. You can actually also, from this area, I think you can get a much nicer view of Ellis Island than you can from uh, Battery Park. Battery Park is just the angle's not quite as good. So if you come here to Wagner Park, you can see it a little bit better here. There's Ellis Island out there. Statue of Liberty, of course, as well. You see some sailboats out here. More sculptures right here in Wagner Park. Keep, keep moving. All right. This is also a really nice spot if you are planning on like maybe renting a bike or something while you're here. This is a really nice spot to ride your bike. If you do make sure you're only on that level right over there, this path up here is just for pedestrians. But you see what a nice walk this is. You get the breeze off the water. It's beautiful. It's not super crowded. So worth a walk over here. You can get some nice views of uh, the Trade Center as well. I mean, certainly some different angles. More sculptures. This one is actually relatively new. This is to Mother Cabrini. There's actually a sink shrine to her uptown in Manhattan, all the way up in Inwood. We're on the back side of the Jewish Heritage Museum here. Actually, the path we're on right now, just so you know, especially if you are a runner or a cyclist, I know everybody goes to run in Central Park and it's beautiful, it's very hilly. If you wanna avoid the hills and you want a nice long path to run on, this cannot be beat and you'll get these gorgeous views. And again, some more cool installations and things you can climb on and see. get this beautiful 
shaded, leafy area. But you can continue on this path. This actually runs with a couple little hiccups and, and things to maneuver. You can pretty much take this straight up the west side of the island. So if you are looking for a nice long stretch for biking or running or rollerblading, it's a really good spot. So a lot of these buildings that you're seeing, I mean, besides obviously the museum, which I pointed out to you, most of these are residential. That was largely what was built up in Battery Park City. Once it did start to become built up in the 1980s, a lot of people move here. It's actually considered very desirable, especially for people that work in lower Manhattan. Um, it's so close, it's walking distance. But as you can see, just by walking through it with me now, it's a very, very different feel. Very, very popular for people who want a nice, quiet, leafy place to live. They want to be really, really close to work as well. There are some restaurants and some shops and things like that. But it has a much different vibe than being right in the financial district. Now, some people did leave this area post 9-11. A lot of people were obviously very traumatized by the events on September 11, 2001. They are right by the Trade Center. Most people in the neighborhood would have witnessed the towers falling. And so some people did leave the area, but there has certainly been a resurgence. And this is once again becoming a very, very popular spot for people to live. And that's true of a lot of Lower Manhattan. There were a lot of things that that left Lower Manhattan, people, businesses, etc. But a lot is back. So you can see right across the river there, that is New Jersey. Over on that side, I don't know if you can see it from here, but there's a big light up clock. That's the Colgate clock. apartment buildings very nice apartment buildings pretty pricey apartment buildings As you can see everywhere you would live basically in Battery Park City, you would have really easy access to this river path. Another little view out at the water. Somebody sailing today. entering an area with a few more people we are getting closer to Brookfield place which is very very popular with locals and tourists actually we'll be there in a minute this is a really cool space here and I'll be able to finish up showing you so Brookfield place is largely office buildings. The reason it's so popular with both tourists and visitors, a couple things. There are a lot of shops in Brookfield Place, very high-end shopping. This is not the place to go if you are looking for bargains. This is very high-end boutiques, but I think the real draw for most people, and what I love about Brookfield Place, is um, there is a giant food hall inside. You can find 
a little bit of everything. So if you are a foodie, if you are down here in lower Manhattan, um, or I actually really particularly recommend this. Sorry, it's very windy today. I'm sure you can hear that. I'm getting a lot of breeze off the water right now. Um, but I think it's a really great option to go to Brookfield Place. If you're the really large group of people down here who don't all have the same taste in food, uh, which can happen when you're traveling with a lot of people and sometimes it's hard to pick a place to eat. Um, that's where things like uh, Brookfield Place can really, really come in handy uh, because there, I promise, is something for everybody there. Um, it's also very, very popular. <gasps> hi, pup. Hi. Sorry, I had to stop and say hi to a dog. Uh, so, also very, very popular in the winter time if you're down here. Um, sometimes it can be a bit cold, especially down here close to the water. And there is a big indoor courtyard, I guess is how I would describe it. And it's open to the public. And you just need to go sit for a little while and warm up. It is a really good option. So you can actually start to see Brookfield Place just over here. There's also a marina here. So you'll see some sailboats docked here. Sometimes you'll see some very impressive yachts docked here, <laughs> depending on when you happen to come. So like I said, a little more life going on here. A few more people, um, but it's because there's a lot to do right in this area. We'll take a quick look at the boats here. If you're looking for Brookfield Place and its buildings, this is what they look like. So definitely a place to come in the winter time or if you're looking for food, or both. And while there are some restaurants right in the residential section of Battery Park City, there's certainly a lot more options here. So if you are looking for something, even besides the food hall in there, you'll find a little more down here. But it's still very green and very pretty, even if it is a bit more crowded. sure you've noticed lots of people running by me. I was not joking when I said this was a popular place to run. It is. So now you can see the entrance to Brookfield Place here. Um, another thing you can do here is obviously not year round, but there is an ice skating rink here in the winter time. Uh, I know a lot of people flock to Rock Center or to the Woolman Rink in Central Park and, and those are wonderful. Um, but can I skate here as well and it's beautiful and it's a little bit less crowded and you do get some views out over the water and then you can run inside to Brookfield Place and get food, <laughs> warm up immediately. So there's some good things. But, uh, mini golf set up here for little kids this is not permanent but there is usually something set up here some kind of of recreation set up here We've got lots of people eating outside and enjoying the day some very nice looking boats over here Um, and you can see 
signs for the Tribeca Festival here, June 9th through June 20th. It's a film festival. Probably you've heard of it. It's a very famous film festival. Um, and even though this is really not Tribeca, events for the Tribeca Film Festival certainly spread beyond Tribeca. So we're just gonna come see one last thing up here before we finish up. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing some Battery Park and then a little bit of the peace and quiet of Battery Park City. And we'll come finish up here. Definitely highly recommend coming and seeing both of these for yourself. But in the meantime, you can walk through them with me like this. Sorry for the truck backing up and beeping, sort of ruining my shtick about peace and quiet. This is a great, if you're looking for a way to like kind of build an itinerary for a day, this is a perfect thing to add on, like I said, lower Manhattan, um, or even if you're doing the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. Now bear in mind, if you take the Statue of Liberty ferry and you're doing it that way, that's a good half day. Uh, it really is. If you're going to do both islands, four to five hours, probably. So it is a long day. You don't want to plan too, too much. So you're not exhausted. But you could definitely do Battery Park and Battery Park City at the same time. So this is what I wanted to come and show you. It was this structure here. We'll take a little walk around. You know, it's kind of, kind of an unusual thing to see, I think, in this area because this is, generally speaking, pretty manicured looking. Down here it's very pretty and it's very leafy, but it's, it's very manicured looking. But this is called the Irish Hunger Memorial. And this is dedicated to the victims of the Irish potato famine. Um, so this is the underside of it. You can see there is lettering here. I'll give you a second to look like this. We'll walk around to the other side and I'll give you one last look of the whole thing. But this was actually designed to give you a, a little slice of rural Ireland. Uh, right here in Lower Manhattan um, to give people a glimpse of what a field during the potato famine would have looked like. Um, it's, it's one of those things I think people walk by and go, huh, that's strange if they don't really know what it is. But it's, it's pretty beautiful and really moving. If you take a little time, read some of the inscriptions and really, really look at it. Um, and the Irish potato famine ended up having a major impact on New York as well because that created a massive wave of Irish immigration into New York in the mid-1800s and really changed the makeup of New York City and, and the Irish became such an influential population in this city. So here is a look at the monument. So we will finish up here with a nice look. So this is where we'll finish up. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you'll check out some of our other walks, uh, not just here in New York, but cities all over the world. And as you start to plan your trips to New York City, please keep in mind some of the tour options that I mentioned while we were walking together. We have self-guided tours, we have audio tours, we'll have group walking tours. So we hope that we see you on your next trip to New York City. Until then, we'll see you next time.